All right, everyone, I can assure you that I am not going to dump a bucket of ice water over my head. I'm not going to let anyone dump a bucket of ice water over my head. But I have a challenge for each and every one of you, and there's a pledge involved. I pledge my heart to all of you, and I put forth this challenge to you all. It's not going to cost you a penny for your pledge is your heart and I hope this challenge becomes bigger and spreads faster than the ice bucket challenge. I promise you you're not going to get wet, well maybe a little, from your very own tears. I'm going to put forth my challenge to you and I usually don't keep notes but I have notes. Here is my challenge to you all and I pray but you do a video, make a home video, and you do put it up on Facebook. And I pray that this challenge catches on. Here we go. I challenge each and every one of you to make time, to find time in your busy day as a family, to sit down at the supper table together, to hold one another's hands, to bow your head, and say grace before a holy God and to take time at the supper table to listen to one another. I put forth this challenge to each and every one of you to take 15 minutes out of your day and ask your spouse how their day went. Put down the television remote, turn off the TV, Turn off your cell phone, turn off your computer, and listen, listen to your spouse. Couples, married couples, I challenge you to fireproof your marriage. Here's something that you're not going to hear a pastor talk about up on the pulpit on a Sunday morning. Couples, stop using sex as a way to control and to manipulate your partner. Stop refraining from sex as a means of punishment. Marriage is a work in progress. It, take, it takes work and God is doing a work in your marriage, molding and changing of both of you. Stop holding on to unforgiveness. I challenge you. Let it go. Let go of the way your spouse used to be. And look at the man or woman, the husband or wife that God has before you now. Don't refrain from the marriage chamber. Don't do that as a means of punishment, for the punishment may fall on your head. I challenge you to take time, rather than to scold, to punish, to ground, to go to your child, especially your teenagers, and complain about the way they're dressed, about how much makeup they're putting on, or who they are hanging out with and their friends. I challenge you to put all that aside and to listen to them. To listen to them. I know you think at their age, they, they, they think they know everything. Their body is going through changes, both physically and emotionally. Listen to your children. Take time and be quiet. Give them your full undivided attention and listen to them. I can't tell you how many teenagers I minister to on the street that have run away if only mom or dad would have listened. Listen to them. This is an important time. They are our future. They're in a crisis and they need you. And God wants you to listen. Sometimes we got to stop talking and 
just listen. I challenge in closing every one of you, the next time you see a homeless person, to buy them a sandwich or a hamburger. I challenge each and every one of you, the next time you see a homeless person on the street, to say something kind to them and to make them smile. I challenge each and every one of you, the next time you see a homeless person on the street, to give them a hug. Oh, right away, the church today. The church will say, I'm not gonna buy that person a sandwich or a meal. They probably want drugs, they probably want alcohol. I'm not gonna give them a hug because they smell bad. I challenge you to look deep into your heart because by the grace of God, there go you. I challenge my Christian brothers and sisters to repent and come back to God, turn back to God. Ask forgiveness for things that you have done in the past. If you've committed adultery, love your wife, go to her, whatever caused you to backslide, to commit adultery against your wife or against your husband, run them back to them and get rid of the things that brought this about, the causes. I challenge you to listen and feel the Holy Spirit as it convicts you of sin. Because when you sin, you grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit won't remain with you until you repent, repent and come back to God and ask forgiveness and invite the Holy Spirit back. And to the unsaved out there who think you have time, you have no time. The door of the ark is about ready to shut. That trumpet's gonna sound. You, did, you may not have until the time this video is uploaded. There is no more time. Do you think you can't go back and start your life over and right all the wrongs? Jesus paid that price for you. He took every sin, every wrong you ever committed and he took it to the cross. And all you need to do is acknowledge that you're a sinner and repent to a holy God and to invite Jesus into your heart. But do it tonight. Leave me a comment below if you're ready. If you are ready, just type, I'm ready. I want to be saved tonight. You may not have tomorrow. Love thy brother. I challenge you to love thy brother as I so. I challenge you to hug a homeless person, a homeless mother or father, a homeless child. Because for the grace of God, there go you. God bless you all.